Hallelujah. 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 Let us thank God for our visiting praise team. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. The joy of the whole world. Amen. You are the joy of the whole world. Amen. Amen. If you would, turn in your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. We're going to be at verse number 1. Matthew 10, verse 1. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. If you have it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out after instructing them, do not go in the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter any city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep, of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely you give. Amen. You may be seated. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. God of the whole world, thank you, Father, for blessing us with your presence this morning. Thank you, God, for blessing us with life, health, and strength as well as it is, Father. Thank you, God, for allowing us to make it one more time. More importantly, God, thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Thank you, God. Pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would direct me, would be the guiding force, God, that speaks to your people. Use my mouth, but let it be your words, your voice. Use my body, God, but let it be your strength. And so, Father, we believe that if you would do that and if you would open up the hearts and minds of your people, God, which you alone have the power to do for those that are in the room, God, that have yet to accept your son, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior, God, would you open up their hearts today? Would you let today be their day? God, that you allow them to believe, that you allow them to choose your son, Jesus Christ. Would you do that, God? Be edified in this place. Be glorified in this place. Let your people be edified, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen talking about today in our series, our three-part series on power to the people, what it means to operate in divine power and authority. What it means to operate in divine power and authority. In 2017, assistant coach Mike Brown of the Golden State Warriors, he had to step up and take on the role of head coach because head coach Steve Kerr had a physical issue to where he had to step away from the sideline for a moment. Steve Kerr had already led a team to the NBA Finals. He had had relationships with the, uh, he had built relationships with the players. He had strategized and all of these wonderful things, and now he has to step away. But because he had already spent time with Mike Brown, Mike Brown was equipped to step in and take on the role of head coach. Because Mike Brown had listened and he had strategized with Steve Kerr. And now, once 
on the sideline as the head coach, Steve Kerr, now has to watch from the stands to see just how well Mike Brown will do, see just how well his training is going to pay off. Now, once a person that was coaching the stars has to watch how somebody else does it, has to watch and from the sidelines. That was an article that came out in 2017 in NBA.com. Sports writer Sean Powell reports that Kerr has spoken uh, with Brown daily. They talk all the time. So this is this is this should be okay. The two discuss strategies and uh, basketball related issues. Brown says the Warriors have not strayed from the business as usual. They're still on the same course as they were when head coach Steve Kerr was on the sideline. We haven't strayed. He said, although Brown drops in a few of his own strategies from time to time, he does them with Kerr's full blessing. He does it with Kerr's full blessing. You see, Kerr had been coaching long enough to know that if you're going to leave someone in charge, it may be by name, and it can't be by name and title only. The name and title of interim coach has value. Yes, it has power, but it needs to come with some authority. How many of you know you can be on the sideline as a head coach, but not have head coach authority and can't change a player in the game? The terms are often interchangeable. When you hear power and authority, you, you kind of associate them together, but there is a slight difference between the two. Power is the ability to do something, either by strength and or intellect. Power is the strength, is the ability to do something, either by strength and or intellect. Authority is power in action. You can have power and no authority. You, you, can, you can have a title, but you really can't do anything with the title. And so you need to understand that power means I'm equipped, but authority means I'm activated. Authority means I'm act. Power talks control. Authority takes control. Power says I can. Authority says I can and I will. Power talks a good game, authority plays a good game. Power says, don't try me, authority says, I've had enough. Power says, touch me and I'll hurt you. Authority can hurt you and, you'll never, and they'll never lay a finger on you. That's the difference between power and authority. So just because you have power doesn't mean you have authority. So today we look at what it means to operate in divine power and authority. In your Bibles and uh, Matthew chapter 10, the Bible says, verse 1, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples. Now, I want to stop right there just for a second and let you know that operating in divine power and authority means that you are willing to obediently alter your life and heed the voice of God. Operating in divine power and authority means that you are willing to obediently alter your life and heed the voice of God. When he says he summoned the 12 disciples, now don't forget just last week he had already met with the disciples. Just last week he had performed miracles. Just last week he had already told them that he was going to be praying to God the Father to send some laborers because the harvest was ripe, but we had a labor shortage. And now this week he comes and summons his disciples. Now when you hear the word summon, don't just pass by it. Because that's different than a call. A call, he called them in Matthew chapter 4. That was by invitation. Now he summons them, that's about operation. So you need to understand the difference between a call and a summons. He summoned them. When you get summoned, you have to drop what you're doing, drop what's important to you, and come and see about those who are summoning you. That's what you got to do. Last, last week, last week, I was uh, I, I, at the end of service, uh, uh, Brother Arthur Bell came up to me. He said, man, listen, I missed that meeting last week. You told me about the meeting. Me and my wife, we were going to come to the meeting, and we had intended to come to the meeting with Pastor Blake on that Tuesday night, and we didn't make it. I'm so sorry we didn't make it. But what, here's what happened, Brother Royce. He says, man, we got a jury summons. He says, and I had to go down there, and I thought that I was going to be able to get out of there early because the week before, we went down there for my wife, and we didn't have to stay long. But this time, when I got summoned, I had to stay. 
He had plans to be here at Crossover, but the jury's summons told him, your plans have been changed. See, you got to understand, when you're walking with Jesus, you got to be willing to change your plans. You got to be willing to drop what you're doing and drop what's important to you and see just what it is that God is calling you to do. When you don't answer your summons, there is a warrant that could be placed out for your arrest. When there's a warrant placed for your arrest, you don't live comfortably in this United States. You're always looking over your shoulder. You're trying to see if that cop going to make a U-turn and follow somebody. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. You, you're, trying to, you're trying to see, you know, is, is that doorbell? Is that, is that somebody coming to get you? You can't be comfortable when there's a warrant out for your arrest. And I'm afraid that there's somebody in this room that has yet to answer the summons of God calling you on your life, and now there's a spiritual warrant out for your arrest. That's why you can't sleep at night. It ain't, it ain't bad nerves, baby. There's a summons out for your arrest. That's why your marriage might be where it is because there might be a summons out for your arrest. That's why your money is funny and your change is strange because there might be a summons out for your arrest. There might be a summons out. You might want to check. You might want to call and see if there's anybody looking for you. How do you know? How do you know there's a summons? Because when God calls you, He gives you a desire to answer the call. Some of some of us in this room, we we've been called to children's church, but we haven't answered the call. How, how do you know we've been called? Because here's how you know you've been called. When those children running down the hallway and it bothers you, and you sit yourself. To, that, these, these kids, so that mean that that might be your job. That might be your job. Wait, listen, you might have a call on your life to deal with the youth if every time you see them young ladies, pull your skirt, baby, pull your skirt. Is anybody telling her, put that up, girl? That might be your call. Pathfinders might have a call in here to talk to the young adults. Young adults, you might have a call in here to ask some Pathfinders some questions. Got a summons out for you. Got a summons out for you. He says, he says in verse number one, says he summoned them. He called them to himself. So operating in divine power and authority means that you're willing to obediently alter your life and heed the voice of God. And let me, let me, let me pause just long enough to say this. Your level and degree of power and authority is based on your spiritual proximity, not your spiritual identity. It's based on your spiritual proximity, where you are in the spirit, where you are spiritually, how close you are to God. That's what your, spirit, your level of spiritual authority and power is based on, not just because you come to church and pay your tithes. Not just because you sing in the choir. The devil is not impressed with you being on the greeters board. The devil is not impressed by how much money you give to church. The devil is not impressed that you met your resurrection village contribution commitment. He wants to know how close are you to Jesus? How close are you? So don't get it twisted. Don't think just because you come every Sunday that you're in good and that, that your spiritual authority ought to be on the next level. Not everybody, not everybody goes to the next level in spiritual authority. Some of us plateau at a certain spiritual level. Some of us plateau when we got baptized. Some of us plateaued when we took new members class. Some of us plateaued after one hospital visit. That's all we had in us for our whole spiritual journey. The question is, have you plateaued and do you have anything else to give? Can you make it to the next level? If so, you got to get next to Jesus. You got to get next to Jesus. You got to get close. And if you get close to Jesus, that means you got to leave some other devils alone. You, you, can't, you can't, listen, listen, you can't dance with the devil and Jesus. Jesus don't take seconds. He's not waiting on the sideline for you to finish dancing with the devil. Jesus is saying, hey, come to me now. Come to me now. Verse number two says this. So now, now James, the 12 apostles are these. Uh, so now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, 
who betrayed him. Next thing you need to know, if you're going to operate in your divine spiritual authority, that operating in divine power and authority is based on God's sovereign selection and not personality, popularity, or your past and future failures. It's not based on that. Operating in divine authority is based on God's sovereign selection. It's who God chooses to use. It's who God selects. It's who God calls on. You and I would have to be honest in this room. If it was us that had to, uh, uh, that had to call the 12 apostles, there would be some of them jokers we wouldn't have called. Some of them we wouldn't have called because of the way they smell. Smell like fish. We wouldn't, hey, 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 stay over there, man, stay over there. You, you, listen, go take a bath first and then come talk to us about serving. Some of us would have treated it like that. Some of us would have said, hey, listen, you don't know enough. You haven't, you're not smart enough. You're not intelligent enough. We would have put restrictions on it. All Jesus says, I need you to follow me. Be willing to follow me. Follow me. It's his selection. Uh, Simon Peter, you know who he is. He's the cusser. He's the one that will cuss you out. You sit next to some of them right now. You, there's a Peter on your row right now. And if, there, if, you don't, if you look to your left and don't see him, and you look to the right and don't see him, just look at you. He, he chooses whom he will. He selects whom he will. These guys, they all have something that Jesus can use. Now here's what's important about that. Because some of us will look at our life, look at what we've been through, look at our failures, and believe that we have nothing to offer God. Some of us will believe that because we failed in the past, because we have a failed marriage, because we've had abortion, because we used to be on drugs, because we've lied and cheated and stolen and been fired and been in prison and been in jail, that we are useless. But we stop by to tell you today that God has something for you to do. You don't have to sit on the sideline and wonder whether or not God can use you. God can use you just the way you are. Sure, he doesn't want you to continue in sin, but he can use you from your sin. Can you, matter of fact, some of us up here holding the microphone today, right now at this moment, shouldn't be here if it was based on your uh, curriculum, based on your statistics, based on your, uh, 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 what you think should be right. Some of us up here in a blue jacket wouldn't be up here. But thanks be to God that he looked beyond my faults and saw all my needs. And so you don't have to sit on the sideline and wonder if you have anything to offer. God can use you just where you are. He can use you. The Bible says this in verse number 5. It says, These 12 Jesus sent out after instructing them. Do not go in the way of the Gentiles. Do not enter any city of the Samaritans. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Operating in divine power and authority means that you work in cooperation with God, God's kingdom agenda. Whether you understand it or not, you don't work against it, you work with God's kingdom. If you're going to operate in your spiritual uh, power and authority, you have to understand that you're going to be in cooperation with God, not against him. What do you mean by that? God says, watch this, these 12, Jesus sent after, after introducing him, do not go in the way of the Gentiles and do not enter any city of the Samaritans. Now, why would he tell them not to go and preach to somebody who was lost? Why would he tell them not to go and help somebody who needed help? Because God operates in order. I need to say that again. God operates in order. He's not emotional like we are. He's not a, he, don't just, he don't just jump into something just because he gets emotional about it. God has a plan, and it would behoove us, as grandmama used to say, to follow God's plan. 
He says, he says, don't go to the Gentiles, go to the house of Israel. Why? Because in, back in uh, Daniel, I believe it was, he had already spoken in Genesis. He says, and I will bless those who bless you, talking to Abraham, Genesis 12, uh, 12 and 3, and the one who curses you, I will curse, and all the families of the earth will be blessed. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 3, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Here's what he's saying. If the house of Israel can get straight, everybody else will follow. I'll bless everybody else if I can just get them straight. So while you're trying to, watch this, while you're trying to go out there and save everybody, you might be working on the wrong folk. Maybe you should be spirit-led in who God leads you to as opposed to you trying to be a spiritual superhero and save everybody. You ever met anybody that just had a knack for trying to save everybody? They couldn't sleep at night because everybody wasn't saved. They couldn't sleep at night. They couldn't eat well because somebody else was doing wrong. Listen, listen, I understand what it means to want to help somebody. But I also know what it means to be led by the Lord, led by the Spirit. Why? Because sometimes you can waste time on folk who don't want to be saved. Listen, 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 listen. Everybody, my goodness, I know somebody, I know, I know this marriage counselor uh, guy who, who, who when people call him, he don't get excited like he used to. He don't get excited like he used to. Why? Because they'll call and say we need help, but they won't come get the help that's offered. They'll have him up all night on the phone when they don't want to do what it is that, that God has called them to do. Any, any, anybody know somebody who asks for help, and when you give it to them, they don't take your advice? Any, any. He, 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 listen, listen one, one, one time he told me, one time, one time he, 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 he and his wife was traveling, and, 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 oh, Lord, and this. <laughs> And he spent four hours on the phone talking to somebody about their marriage. Four hours talking on the phone only to have to hang up in the husband's face at the end of the four hours. Because the husband's still talking crazy, still talking mad. If you spend four hours of your time with somebody and they still don't want to act right, then let them go. You, 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 that, that, that's too much time. They may not be ready for your salvation. They're not ready. They're not ready. Have you canceling your plans and they don't show up? I'm talking on his behalf right now. Have you canceling your date nights and they don't show up? Uh, but he's going to be all right, y'all. Y'all don't need his name. Just pray for him. He's going to be all right. He said, go to, the, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jeremiah 50 and 6 says, my people have become lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray. They have made them turn aside on the mountains. And they have gone along from mountain to hill and have forgotten their resting place. He says, that's why I need my people. That's why I need you to go to them first because they're my people. They're mine. And, and I, want them, I, don't, I don't want them to go through what they're going through. I don't want them to have to deal with what they're dealing with. I need you to go to them and help save them. I need you to go preach the gospel to them. Because watch this. If they see your miracles, if they hear about what you're doing, they'll remember what it was that was said in the Old Testament, and it will, it will jog their memory. The Savior must be here. And so, and, so, and so he said, go get them. Now, how does that apply to you and I? See, I know what he said in the scripture, but there's been a change since then. Now, you and I have been adopted into the royal family. And he doesn't want you and I to suffer those same consequences. He don't want you and I up and down the mountainside. He don't want you and I confused. He wants you and I to come to him as well. And so if you're here today, if you're here today, then you don't have to wander around in this world by yourself. You can come to Jesus just as you are. 
Matter of fact, there's somebody that's going to be praying for you in just a few moments, but we stop to tell you just right now that you can accept Jesus and come to him today because he's interested in your life. Operating in divine power and authority means that you work in cooperation with God's kingdom agenda. The apostles were to go only to the lost sheep of Israel because the kingdom message was for God's covenant people. Israel needed to accept her king Jesus who had arrived. What would you do while possessing divine authority? Or what you do while possessing divine authority is never in isolation of self, never separated from God's kingdom agenda. Authority does not equate to autonomy. When we are operating, lesson, 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 when we are operating in authority, it doesn't mean that we don't have to consult God. It doesn't mean that God is just going to lead us without instructing us. It doesn't mean that. Why do you say that? Why do you pause long enough to drop this in? Because sometimes we can be overzealous about our calling and gifting. Sometimes we can. Sometimes I, I've done it. Let me confess. I've done it. I've thought just because I have the ability, just because God has gifted me, just because I can do whatever it is in encouragement, I'll just go talking to folks and I'll put my nose in God's business. When I did not listen to God first to see if God was going to instruct me to those people. And so the lesson for those of us who are mature saints is we need to be very careful when we proceed in the name of Jesus to help somebody that God didn't send us to. So let me just drop that on you real quick. Let me leave that there. Verse number seven. Verse number seven. Then he says, and as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely you give. I'm going to throw in verse number 1 with that. Back up at the top, verse number 10, or chapter 10, verse 1, it says, and he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. So in verse number one, he talks about what he's going to do, just for those of us who are listening. And then verse number seven and eight, he does what he said he was going to do in verse number one. All right? All right, so verse number one, he's just giving you a cover over what he's going to do. And then verse number seven and eight, he actually does it. And so the message for us is this. Operating in divine power and authority gives you the spiritual advantage to carry out and accomplish Every assignment that you've been given, every assignment that you've been given, operating in divine power and authority gives you the spiritual advantage to carry out and accomplish every assignment that you've been given. Look what he says. He says, verse number one, he gave them authority over unclean spirits. The Bible says he gave them. What does that mean? He didn't just hand them authority. I need you to understand what it means when he says he gave them authority. Uh, Joe said and I, uh, likes like to watch HGTV. I actually just like watching it with Josette. She's watching it, so I'm going to watch it for those who are listening. <laughs> and so, so one of the one of the shows that she likes to watch is I, I think it's House Hunters uh, Beachfront Property, one of those type uh, locations. She likes the water, and and, and so she likes watching. It. <clears throat> Listen. When you ain't got a lot of money, <clears throat> you can take a, a nice vacation on HGTV. <clears throat> we, we, we've been to Belize, Honduras, Cayman Islands, and all in one day. Let, you, you might want to try, go put on your bathing suit and just sit on your couch, sip on your pina colada, and just kick back and just enjoy the white sands of Belize. Just, just try it. And so, so we watch it. The ones that I like to watch... Uh, the one, when I really get excited about one of the houses that they sell is when they come fully furnished. It comes fully furnished. That means they don't have to bring anything. They don't have to buy anything. All they got to do is show up. When the Bible says Jesus gave them authority, that word gave literally means he furnished them with all they needed to do what he was going to call them to do. So all they had to do was just be willing and show up. What am I trying to tell somebody in this room? 
God calls you. When he calls you, he gives you the authority. Everything you need, God is going to supply. So you don't have to worry about trying to pack uh, uh, Big Mama's Bible with you. You don't have to worry about trying to memorize, you know, the Ten Commandments. You don't have to. God will take care of all that you need. He furnished the whole thing. It says he furnished them with power and authority. And watch this. When he gave them power and authority, he gave it to them over unclean spirits. Is that in your Bible? Over unclean spirits. That's important. That's important. Why is that important? Because we tend to think, those of us who are spiritual, we tend to think sometimes that we are in a fight, in a in a in a even fight with the enemy. We 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 think we think the enemy really has an upper hand. But we didn't realize that when God gave us authority, he gave it to us over unclean spirits, not equal to unclean spirits. You better read your Bible. So, so watch this, so watch this. M listen, the devil is no match for me. The demonic realm is not really a match for me as long as I remember I have power over them and don't give over my power. Listen, 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 listen. You, you can give over your power. When you've been given power over, you can give it up. How can you give it up? I'll I tell you how to give it up. I'll tell you how to give it up. A answer a call about 3 in the morning. You'll give it up. you give up your power. Say amen. Just say amen. They won't know I'm talking to you. You, you'll, give it, you, you'll give up your power. You'll give up your power when you get a little pressure and, and you tell something that ain't really, you know, it's, it's, it's a little white lie. You'll give up your power. You'll give up your power when you start worrying about things that you can't control instead of giving it to Jesus, giving it to God, laying it at his feet, and leaving it there. You'll give up your power when you go back and get it and try to fix it yourself. You'll give up your power then. So, so, so remember, when Jesus furnished them with power and authority, he gave them everything they needed over unclean spirits. What are unclean spirits? Unclean spirits is anything that's mixed. Anything that's mixed. It's, it's got a little good, but it's got just a little bad. That's an unclean spirit. Now, that, that's scary because last night was Saturday, and some of us mixed just, just a little bit, just, just wasn't much. You know, it was just last night. Don't act like you forget. It was just last night. Not a full 24 hours. Don't look at me funny. It's, it's just a little mix. It's just a, it's just a little mix. So, 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 so you need to understand that, 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 that even though he gave you power over unclean spirits, sometimes you can be the unclean spirit. Listen, listen. Sometimes, sometimes when, when, when you're driving in the parking lot at Crossover Bible Fellowship and somebody gets your spot, And, 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 and you forget that you had crossover Bible fellowship. You might be the unclean spirit. And it's hard, church, it's hard. It's hard to cast out the unclean spirit when you're hanging out with the unclean spirit. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard to tell the unclean spirit, get away from me. No, come here. Wait. I didn't mean, come here. It's hard, it's hard to cast it out and hang out with it at the same time. He says he gave you the power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Every kind. Every kind of disease and unclean spirit. When he says every kind, uh, 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 it's, it's kind of like what they used to say in school. All means that's what it means. Every kind of unclean. That's not an unclean spirit that he cannot, that, that, that you don't have the power and authority to call out and cast out. That's not a one. Your children on drugs, your children out there in the street, you can call that thing out, that unclean spirit. You have the power and authority to do that. Your marriage is shaky right now. You have the power and authority to call out that unclean spirit. You got folks that's trying to take you out of here. You got the 
power to call out and cast out that unclean spirit. You got the power to call it out and the authority. Not just the ability, but you watch this. You're not just indoctrinated with it. You are activated. You are activated. Activate. That don't sound, okay. So back in the day, that was this hostile. Some of y'all had one. <laughs> Call a Jerry Curl. And the Jerry Curl, uh, uh, it, 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 you have to roll your hair up. And then you, you, you kind of all it down. Put a towel over your pillow at night. You know what I'm talking about. And, 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 and you would have these curls, but, but watch this. Every now and then, it would dry up a little bit. And it wouldn't look as fresh as it did the very first time. And in order to get it back looking like you had it, you had to spray on some activate. Oh, somebody. <laughs> all you needed was five minutes in the restroom and all you come out here and. <laughs> Just like new baby. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say, church, don't sit on the sideline and watch everybody else go to work. Get in the game. You've been activated. You've been activated. You've been activated. It says, all this over there reminiscing now. I'm going to pay for that one. <laughs> he says, he says, here's what you preach. You got to preach this. Preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why is it necessary to preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand? What does, let, let's go here first. What does the kingdom of heaven is at hand even mean? What does it mean that the kingdom of heaven is at hand? In other words, here's what, here's what he's saying. Everything that was talked about and preached about in Old Testament scripture about the Savior coming to redeem the lost sheep of Israel is happening right now. People are being healed. Tell them it's happening right now. People are being delivered. Tell them it's happening right now. The kingdom of heaven is at hand right now. That's good news because it means that we're no longer waiting for the kingdom of heaven to come. It's already here. It's here. Every time you go out and tell somebody about Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Every time somebody says, what must I do to be saved? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. When somebody has cancer on one week, go back to the doctor and they can't find it. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You need to shout because you've been waiting on the kingdom of heaven to come and didn't realize it was already at hand. It's at hand when somebody yields their life to Jesus Christ. It's at hand when a wife submits herself to her husband. Even though, even though he's not submitting himself to God, she walks out 1 Peter 3. The kingdom of heaven is at hand when a husband loves his wife. Even though she doesn't respect him, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What do you mean? It's when the power of God is going out and changing folks from what they used to be. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's at hand. It's been talked about ever since Matthew got started. It was talked about in Daniel. It says, in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. Daniel prophesied that it was coming, which will never be destroyed. This kingdom that's coming, it will never 
be destroyed. This kingdom that's on the way, don't worry about it. It's not brick and mortar, but it's when it comes, it will never be destroyed. Matthew chapter 3 verse 1 says this, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness. What was he saying? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus gets baptized, and from that time, Jesus began to preach saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 says, preach in this way, your kingdom or pray in this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, your will be done. You ought to touch somebody and tell them it's here. It's here. Jesus gave them authority. He gave them delegated authority, delegated judicial power to operate in the spirit realm what they had to walk out in the physical realm. So, 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 so what he wanted them to do was preach the kingdom of heaven was at hand. And then that would let them know that they were operating in their authority. You remember Coach Brown, don't you? Remember Coach Brown? Mike Brown held it down as head coach of the Warriors. He stayed and did the job that he was supposed to do. He stayed there long enough for Steve Kerr to come back. But while Steve was gone, Mike Brown was head coach of the Golden State Warriors. He operated in that type of authority. He did what Steve would have done had Steve been there. And he held it down. The records will show that Mike Brown took the Golden State Warriors out of regular season and put them in the playoffs. Once they got in the playoffs, records reflect that head coach Steve Kerr made it back to the sideline. When Steve Kerr came back to the sideline, he took back over what Mike Brown was doing. And, and records will reflect that he didn't just take over, the records will show that they got a victory out of the situation. All he needed Mike Brown to do was do his job do what he was instructed to do, do what he was empowered to do, and just hold it down until he got back. And then once he got back, Steve Kerr took him on to the championship. They celebrated with fanfare. Confetti fell from the ceiling. Folks lifted up their hands. You know why they lift up their hands, don't you? They lift up to say, you are good, and you are great, Golden State Warriors. Somebody already got me already. Listen, Jesus, when he left here, he left you and I in authority. He gave us all the authority we needed to do everything he called us to do. That wasn't a job that he gave us that he didn't give us the authority to do. That wasn't a sickness that's here that we can't heal. That's not a demon here that we can't cast out. Everything God gave us the ability to do, he gave us the authority to carry it out. What am I trying to say to somebody? All he needs you to do is hold down your job until he gets back. Because when he gets back, the Bible says he's going to open up the sky and he's going to call out those who have died in his name. And everybody is going to get up. But before they do, he says every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. You are God and you are good. All he needs you to do is operate in your divine, your divine power and authority. That's all he needs you to do. All he needs you to do is be obedient. Humble yourself. Answer the summons. That's all he needs you to do and just hold it down till he gets back. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, God, for your people.